Are you an out school teacher that wants to get into the flex class game? Are you puzzled on how you can increase your student and teacher interactions? Because out school wants to see that before they approve your flex class. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how I produce my own flex classes. I'm gonna go over some ways how I utilize video. I'm gonna share with you some teacher tech tools that you can use to increase your student teacher interactions. I'm gonna take you behind the scenes on how I set it up, what I'm using, and how I am making sure that it is a successful student experience. If you are ready to get your flux game on, show me by dropping an emoji. Let's see. Um, is there a is there an arm emoji? Drop an arm emoji down in the comments below if you are ready to get your flex game on. But first, hello, my name's Serena from SincerelySerena.com. If you are interested in learning how you can up your teaching game with fun tips, tricks, and inspiration, you can go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you wanna learn how you can jumpstart your out school career and be in charge of your own salary, let me know in the comments below or email me. And as always, I know your time is very precious and important. I'm going to put timestamps down in the description box as well as pertinent videos down there as well as in the I cards above my head. All right, let's talk about flex classes. If you are an out school teacher, you probably already know what a flex class is, but if you are new to the out school teaching world, a flex class is basically a student paced class that has no live meetings. It has a direct start and an end and out school wants to make sure that there are enough student and teacher interactions above just a student turning in work and a teacher grading that work and giving their comments on it. They want a lot and you're going to have to show a lot of student teacher interactions when you go to get your flex class approved. Outside platforms can be utilized in your flex classes, but OutSchool wants to make sure that the majority of communication happens on the OutSchool platform. Okay, so how do you deliver your lessons? There are numerous ways on how you can deliver your lessons. Me personally, I utilize Google Slides with web integrations as well as videos. So let's talk about videos first because I think videos are probably the majority way of how teachers deliver their lessons. So you can record a video on any, pretty much any device that can record a video. If you need tips on how to get a good quality video, I will leave that down below, but let's talk about how you are going to deliver those videos. So you can do it in one of a couple of ways. So first you can store that video on your computer and just upload it on the OutSchool platform itself. The only downside to that is that the OutSchool platform does not allow for great big files. So if you do a lot of editing or if your lessons are long, like I think one of my lessons was like 50 minutes long. It's gonna to be too big in order to put that in. Maximum memory is 100 MBs. So you could do it that way if you have a short and sweet lesson. Another way many teachers do this, and I did this for a couple of my classes, you could upload your video to YouTube and have it as an unlisted video and then link that unlisted video to your classroom. I did this for a couple of my classes and it worked just fine. The only downside of this is that if you are on YouTube, like I am on YouTube, your students now can watch all your videos. I mean, which, I mean, is not a bad thing because I don't put anything on YouTube that I would care that my students, I just, I don't know. I, I think it would be weird for a student to watch all of my videos, but if you are a student watching, hello. Nice to see you. <laughs> I did this for a couple of classes, but this time, this go around with my Hamilton women's class, I actually uploaded my video to my Google Drive. And with Google, you can set the, the sharing restriction on anyone with a link, can view this video, and then and share it into the classroom that way. That way, your students don't have access to your YouTube account and your online teacher life on YouTube and it's just a Google account. And then this way I am able to take whatever is on my Google Drive and integrate that with my Google Slides. So that's a whole nother video and I will link that down below. Those are some ways that you can share. There are I think other online storage sites like that you can do but those are the three that I have thought of. So another way that you can deliver your lesson and this is how I do. I do a combination of video and 
my virtual classroom. It's virtual classrooms. It's creative virtual classrooms with mini lessons or whatever you want. Or if you also can put integrated uh, worksheets in your virtual classroom as well. Okay, so how do you increase teacher and student engagement? Because out school is looking for all of the ways that teacher and student will engage. And it should be more than just a student hands work in and the teacher grades it and gives her comments on it. It should be more than that. They want to, you know, see how you are engaging and interacting with those students. And you can do this with a, a plethora of teacher tech tools and there are a lot out there. I'm going to talk about Nearpod, Pear Deck, Kahoot, uh, Flipgrid and Jamboards today. So those are the five things that I personally use for my flex classes. So let's talk about Pear Deck and Nearpod. Pear Deck and Nearpod are basically almost the same thing, but you can use integrated lessons within Pear Deck or Nearpod and, you know, do a lesson, have it pause, ask a question, an engagement question, have the student respond to that and, and, and have the lesson continue. I personally use Pear Deck and I use their Google extension with my Google Slides. So I create a Google Slides presentation and then I create Pear Deck interactive slides within my Google Slide account, which is awesome. I integrate my videos that I have in my Google Drive in my Google Slides presentation. So the student enters the lesson, they watch a portion of my video and it stops and then the student clicks over to the next slide and the next slide is a Pear Deck integrated slide and it asks a question and then the student responds to that question and then they click the next slide and then my video picks back up again. And so that's how at least my Women in Hamilton class is is kind of structured. You can do this with Nearpod as well. Nearpod, actually, you can house your videos on Nearpod and make them interactive within Nearpod. You don't even have to do the Google the Google Slides thing. The only downside with Nearpod is that if you're integrated with Google Slides, the student has to have a Google account. With Pear Deck, the student does not have to have a Google account to look at your lesson. Another downside of Nearpod with videos is that their memory of video is very small. It is 100 MB, just like out schools. You can upload to YouTube and integrate your YouTube video into Nearpod. I have not done this yet, so if you have, let me know how that worked for you in the comments below. Okay, so you can also use Jamboard or Flipgrids for interaction. Jamboard is basically a web-based bulletin board. A teacher puts up a question or whatever, and the students come in and, put, and pin a response. And it is Google-based. Um, your students do have to have a Google account in order to participate in your Jamboard because it is a Google integrated website. And it is housed on the cloud, so as soon as a student updates it, it will update for everyone. Flipgrid, on the other hand, is free and the students do not have to have a Flipgrid account to interact with the teacher posted question. So Flipgrid is basically, I call it like, the TikTok for education, kind of. Flipgrid is a way for students to respond to a question by either a video response or a voice response. And the video response is really fun. You can add stickers, emojis, you can have these cool filters. They even have a, like a Minecraft filter. It's really cool. And of course, everything should be teacher moderated, so you do not have inappropriate videos posted to the rest of your class. But my, my students love using Flipgrid because I mean we're in the TikTok age it kind of feels like a mini TikTok a little bit okay and another way that you can increase student to teacher interaction is a student paced Kahoot game if you don't know what Kahoot is it's basically a gamified game that a teacher will make up for their students you could do a live version or for a flex classes of course you're going to do a student pace so you can do various questions you can post YouTube videos you can ask questions and have them, you know, answer a lot of like comprehension things. And what is the best thing about Kahoot? Not only is it fun for the students to participate in, 
but, and it's free, <laughs> but after the lesson is complete, after your student has completed their Kahoot game, the teacher can go back and look at data and look at what questions their students got wrong. Did the majority of the students get the second question wrong? Do I need to go back and reteach that concept? And I think that data that Kahoot gives is amazing. Okay guys, so those are some things that I have integrated in my Flex class. Thank you for watching. I'll see y'all next time.